Greetings people of YouTube and welcome to Let's Look at the Occult Chronicles uh, in beta. This is a beta version of the game and the game is being developed by an independent company called Cryptic Comet. Uh, you may have heard about this company, they have made other games that were famous in certain circles. Uh, they make uh, turn-based strategy games and they're all 2D kind of flat type board game, old school type of thing. Um, two probably I think they have, this is their fourth game, but there's two of them that I, I personally have not played, but I've heard of them and um, heard only good things of them. And they are Armageddon Empires and uh, Sol Solium Inter Internum, I think is the name. Um, they're, they're both kind of, uh, I think one of them is hexy kind of thing and the other one is more RPG roguelike kind of thing. And this is also kind of RPG roguelike game. So the, um, the Cult Chronicles takes place in a mansion so it's a very again it's a classic idea there's a there's a hat, fedora hat and um you work for the occult defense uh directorate which is trying to fight evil basically uh in the beginning of the game when you start a new game which is what we're gonna do because i die all the time um you choose yourself a mission i uh, probably there's gonna be more of them uh but uh there's i think about six or seven now or maybe well, let's say let's see so this is the Cthulhu one, so one, two, three, four, five, six, six missions, that's pretty good I think. So let's, let's do um, let's do this one for example, the Elder. So the idea is, I'm not going to read it out, but um, there was a war against vampires and the vampires were more or less defeated, some elders were killed, I guess, I guess the elders are, um, you know, the leaders of the vampires. And, uh, but... Uh, the story goes that some of them could be hiding in this building that we're trying to investigate. Um, and uh, here, then we're going to choose what kind of uh, story we're playing. So story speed is basically how much time you have to finish it. So there's slow, standard, and there's fast. Let's go standard because, you know, this is the game actually, should, I know this video rather should not be very long because it will be um, crippling to the audience to watch something that is two hours long and no one will do it. Anyway, so... Um, difficulty is goes from recruit to I think hero or legend so I'm gonna play on agent which is the second uh, level of difficulty because the game is quite hard and there's the reaper mode and the normal mode. reaper mode is basically uh, the iron mode or sorry the iron man mode right so we do that and uh, then we choose our character uh, the portraits here are are completely arbitrary they don't really uh, influence anything in the game so I'm gonna be this one for example and this lady and I'm gonna be named uh, crazy hair and then you choose your background um, which is basically your class so there's the I think there's a sort of a fighter class then there's a sort of a, a, a um, dexterity based class then there's a um, mental power based class and then there's a magic based class as, as, as I understand so far uh, after about two hours spent with the game and the manual it comes with a manual, it's pretty good. Um, you don't really see that very often anymore. So let's go with the police officer. And so you start off walking uh, a beat and thought that making cheap detective was all you ever wanted to before you retired. But one very weird cold case file had you digging in all the wrong places and that's when you were approached by the ODD with a proposition that was just too good to refuse. And then this is the stuff that you get, like the digital stuff. I'm not gonna go into too much detail because this is a sort of a first impression video. Um, so I'm mostly going to talk about uh, just how the game feels, how it plays out. Obviously, all whatever you choose, you get a different back, background story, you get different items or different uh, abilities and so on and so forth. This, so uh, we're going to be good at fighting, but not very good at magic or mind tricks, sort of. Uh, but we can kind of improve that in a second. So we're going to be the police officer. And uh, we're gonna now choose our bone. So both police officers come. Bones are basically dice. So additional dice. You require dice um, to perform certain special abilities. Uh, for example, the police officer starts with bone of swords. So we don't really, we don't need to choose that. We need to choose something else. So let's go. The bone of cups, um, which is and one type of attribute. That I'm gonna explain in a second. It, it it sounds like it is really arcane <laughs> magic manual, but it's not. It's quite simple. Uh, or it's more or less simple. So um, the attributes. This is this leads us to attributes. So you have your health and sanity, uh, with, with which are basically your uh, basically they are your hit points. So um, and there's just two type of hit points. You uh, from if you are scared, you lose sanity. If you are injured, you lose health. 
um, that, that's that's basically it. Now the swords is the how much damage you can deal. Cups is your physique, basically how like strong you are. Wands are your mental abilities, and pentacles are your magical abilities. So I'm gonna just build a balanced build here. You cannot give more than nine in this area, I, th I think. Um, since our swords are probably gonna grow anyway, I, maybe we should. Uh, I don't know. Let's let's be very strong. Let's do it that way. I'll be a bit of a brute. So, and I'm not gonna increase. Actually, I can't decrease health. No, I'm just gonna include all these points into the sanity again because. This is a strong character, a fighter, not necessarily uh, very strong mentally. So we're gonna we need we're gonna need this sanity to survive because there's two types of challenges. Before you even fight anyone in the game, you have to not be horrified by them, or you can be horrified. But if you're horrified too much, you die, or you lose the game because you go insane. Now we need to select a passive ability that's gonna help us out a bit, and this is where we're gonna go for a mental fortress because it's gonna help us uh, reduce. Um, how scary things are gonna be to us as far as I understand again. I may be making a mistake here um, This is based on my experience with the game in that I've acquired in a couple of hours But I think it's a really cool game. That's why I wanted to make a video about it. now So we've sucked up our, our uh, crazy hair police officer with the uh, bone of cops and mental fortress uh, uh, passive ability and we got our attributes over here, so we go and start the game uh, now this is creating the mission and it usually takes up to three days So I'll probably see you when this is created and I'm gonna be uh, that means I'm gonna be using the magical power of editing Bye And hello, we are in the mansion right now. We have the, the game has finally loaded. Uh, this is the opening um, Scene that you will see I think that the Where you start kind of changes slightly depending on what character you have or it's maybe random because I've seen a different opening um, uh, Room but this is more or less it. So the game is turn-based. Like I said, the, guy, the guys at uh, Cryptic Comet, is it Cryptic Comet? Yeah, Cryptic Comet. Produce only turn-based strategy games. Um, so this is where you can go. So you can see the little feet appearing here. And uh, there's, as far as I know, there's six levels, um, six floors. So there's the, the ground level, then there's the second, I think the second floor, first floor, whatever, the, the attic, and there's three sub-levels. And the idea is that the monster, uh, or the, the final boss that you have to find, which you have to fight, is located um, somewhere down under under the mansion. But before you get there, kind of you gotta get strong. So it, it, it's a roguelike. You go, you encounter the, the level is randomized, the rooms are randomized, enemies are randomized. You meet them, you you either die or you come out stronger. And when you're strong enough, and until the time runs out, because time will start running out, uh, oh, it starts running out every like there's a counter. That's why you choose uh, whether or not this is a fast story or a slow story. And uh, until that happens, you need to um, defeat uh, the, the uh, or you know, reach the goal. I, I'm guessing, I've never been there, but I'm guessing there's a giant boss that you have to fight. And let's explore how actually everything works here. So you move around like so, and, and by that you reveal additional uh, places you can go to. Uh, every time you make a move, there could be a random encounter, something can jump at you, and so on and so forth. So let's go the classic way, you know, when you start a, a uh, video game, you always kind of think you should be going right, but if you go left, you get some bonus stuff, but not necessarily in this game. So you click on a door, you open the door, and then you can look further. And obviously this changes the map, and there you are. That's, that's what you have explored so far. A lot of doors in here as well. So let's just step uh, inside. Nothing bad happened, it's good. Uh, there is a door here, or other room. Let's remove this so we can see better. Um, okay, let's go inside. And there's something of interest here because we see there is a question mark. Let's go around for a bit, so like that. So I'll explore and see what this is. Okay, so we find a pile of papers, and so there's going to be no horror challenge. There's different kind of challenges: combat challenge, horror challenge, psychic challenge, and I think arcane challenge. Um, and before you go to other challenges, you, you most of the time things that you encounter are very scary So you have to undergo a horror challenge and see if you can survive uh, in one piece In, in this case, uh, this is a perception challenge. So we're just gonna go through these things and see uh, Whether or not we can um, find anything useful So there's two choices now. You can also leave it alone and the choice you take here uh, Tells you what how difficult it's gonna be so this is difficulty seven that you can see there is minus modifier two equals target five. Target five is okay. It's like a medium difficulty, almost easy um, task. And then there's 
uh, four tricks and four uh, draws. So I'm going to tell you what this is in a second. So once you click that, when you choose to go and play that challenge, you go into this mode with uh, the tarot cards. And these are the tricks. So four tricks and then four draw. Uh, these are the things you hold in your hand. These are the things uh, you cannot see. So what you do is you uh, flip them. And let's say, let's, we, let's say we flip this one. Okay, so this is the same suit as this one because it's cups and cups. King is the highest value card and we beat this card. So we, if I put, take the king and put it down here, I'm gonna get six points. I already won this challenge, which is surprisingly easy. It seems like it's very easy. Game is very hard. Don't be fooled by this. Uh, if we didn't have that, then we wouldn't be able to, but let's say, let's, let's, I'm just gonna go, actually, I'm not gonna explain until we see what ha what's happening. So here is a page of wands. We have no wands, it doesn't affect us. Here is more is, is eight of wands, I think, and again doesn't affect us because all we have is pentacles down here, and this is the six of swords doesn't affect us at all. Uh, if you have um, same suit but lesser card, you have to you have to surrender that card to the computer or whatever to chance to the lady fortune. Uh, and if you cannot reach this goal, you fail the challenge and you may get punished for it. You may get lose your sanity uh, or your health. Uh, but if you do manage to go through it, then uh, you may gain something, but not necessarily. So you, we win. We won this one. It's all good. Success. You don't come across anything earth-shattering, but there is enough information here to boost your confidence that you are on the right track. And after that is done, uh, and depending on how many points above the minimum you have reached, you are going into the pick, uh, pick some uh, good cards. Uh, because we won. If, if it wasn't, we haven't won, we would be picking some bad cards. And if you lose terribly, you pick more bad cards. If you win amazingly, then you pick more good cards. So you, you are rewarded or punished depending on your performance, kind of like in real life. So we just flip random cards, nothing of interest, nothing of interest. We didn't gain anything from this. Um, if we had more perception, per perhaps we would find something more interesting there, but that didn't happen. Let's explore further here. Um, I'd say, yeah, why not? Let's go here. Let's open this door. Oh, it seems like an interesting room. It's going there. And we are uh, greeted with a spray of darts. So this is my, one of the many uh, traps you will encounter in the game. You see our hero fleeing there. Uh, you feel your foot, uh, foot step down on the pressure plate and then hear uh, pneumatic sounds of darts being shot through blow, uh, blow holes, uh, blow tubes, sorry. You catch a glimpse of the deadly swarm of needle-tipped killers heading your way. And in this case, we have two options. We can either instinctively duck away, and the target is six, as Trix is four, draw is five, or we can observe the darts and respond. Uh, this is evade, and they're both evasion ones, and the difference is that one of them has draw five and one has draw four. Draw five is better uh, for us, so we're just gonna instinctively duck away, or try to duck away, rather. Now we have to get six points. Uh, because five points is just not enough anymore, like it was, I think previously was five points, the five, target was five. Um, our cards are okay, they're not great. We can also use some of these things, which is our um, kind of special abilities, um, to reduce the value of cards, but not in this, oh, what is this? Reckless Charge, interesting. So this is Veld in Combat, okay. But we're not in combat right now, we are uh, trying to evade a trap. So they are useless to us, those special abilities. Um, but let's start playing this, uh, you know, in a regular fashion. So, oh, that is really unfortunate. This is a good card, but we're going to lose it to an even better one because we flipped on that one open. So, yeah, that, that sucks. Um, we don't have that. We don't have that. And here we can do that. And, we, we, yeah, we failed, but not too badly. So defeat, you tremble, but choose the wrong direction tumble but choose the wrong direction sorry you might regret this yeah i think so so we need to pick now the bad cards and we may suffer for this so let's pick this one no results so it's good and we uh were lucky enough not to get any uh crappy things happen to us so which is good let's explore the room farther see if there's anything of interest there's something here what, is, what this is oh hello i haven't seen this one before the demon in the fire you see a large marble fireplace decorated with emate sculptures emate Ornate, that was ornate sculptures. But what really astonishes you is the fire burning within the hearth. The flames dance around and click the and lick the walls of the fireplace almost as if they were some type of living entity. Then it strikes you. A demonic face appears in the flames and a sudden realization that the creature has noticed you 
sends a wave of horror rolling over you. You struggle to keep calm and not give in to panic. So every encounter with a supernatural being or even humans who are kind of your enemies, they got human enemies here as well, is going to cause you to be afraid, in many cases very afraid. Let's see how we're afraid we're here. We're not very afraid. This is target four is easy enough. Four tricks, four draw, we should be able to do this. So we need to now undertake a uh, horror encounter again. So we got four cards, there's four cards over here. Uh, we, again, we cannot use our special abilities because they're for combat and this is not combat. Um, let's open this one, no use. Open this one, no use. Open this one and we lose a card. Now this is not going very well. And uh, we gain two points. So we fail, but not too terribly. Imaginary flames leap up all around you, driving you to one step closer to insanity. The panic is overwhelming. So two cards we need to flip and see if any we're punished for our failure. No, and no, again, we are very lucky. So now we can either try to banish the demon or leave um, this place alone. Five again is not too bad, so we can try and banish the demon. You says the binding of the demon in, in, in this nexus might be weak. Perhaps the ritual was flawed. With a little sorcery, you might be able to put out this fire and send it back to wherever hell it crawled out of. It will help to have its name, of course, but that might tempt you to bind it yourself. And that is a dangerous path that you don't want to start uh, down. So we need to use our sorcery and dispelling powers to um, get rid of this guy. Oh, and we're gonna lose, I think. We got terrible cards down here. But there's not, you know, no going back now. So let's start flipping them. Yep, this is not, okay. Still not going very well. Nope. And, oh, this is close enough. Okay, we, lo we lost by very little. So, which means we're gonna probably draw one card and hopefully it's not gonna be something terrible. No, it's fine. Let's try it again, actually. Because this was quite easy. Now we can draw five cards instead of four. Um, because we, we are like, we're persevering, uh, we're trying to, we're de determined. Determination gets you more, uh, makes your task easier, so to say. Uh, but the dangers are the same, but you got more cards, you have more chances to win. So we got a lot of cups here. Uh, if, you, if you land a couple of cups here, mm, no. So let's sacrifice a smaller card. Go here. Uh, very nice. So we got a knight and a queen. Let's use a queen because we may not get another cup. And that already made, scored us a win. And that was a correct choice because there's no other cup. And but well, we still won. Uh, so we actually had the two extra points here. And if it burns, it bleeds flames. Apparently, you subdue the demon and it retreats to its fireplace, chastened by still, by but still potent. Okay. So three, we can flip. Let's go one, two. Okay, we gained uh, some HP and nothing of interest. Well, we banished the demon, I think. Whoa, why is it still here? Didn't we just banish the demon? You know what? Fine. Fine. I'm just gonna go do something else. <laughs> I think that was a bug, but anyway. Because they usually should disappear. And there's another random encounter here. So, uh, malevolent shadows. You are surprised by a sudden flickering of shadows that spread around you. You feel like you're being choked by some invisible force. And again, we have to undergo a horror test. Um, and this is amazing. We already won. So, king is better than the knight. And we get eight points, actually. Maybe we'll even get something nice out of this. Oh, even more points. It's ten. And this is nothing. Okay, so let's see. Um, my mind is very strong. I, I can turn four cards. Technically, there could be something fun here, but not really. Let's see. So we can, again, uh, try and dispel the shadows with our psychic power, or we can flee. Fleeing is actually more difficult for us than dispelling, so we're just going to try and dispel. We got really nice cards, but they're all swords. So we really need some more swords here. Oh, amazing. So, king of swords. Wins the game. Uh, more swords? No? Fine. And we won. And they have been dispelled and nothing of interest. Okay, so this is kind of, so far, not very eventful. Let's open this door here. Okay, so we, we see some blood, uh, which is always promising. Let's go in here. There's something happening here. Let's see if there's more stuff happening there. Not really. Let's see what this is. Okay, and this, are, this is a... Uh, Tesla Rati scientist. You are confronted with a creature from some type of horrible nightmare. It towers over seven feet tall and seems covered in a sickly, translucent slime. You can only describe it as a combination of a snail, a cucumber, and octopus. You can feel that this game was made with love. Uh, you fight 
to control your revulsion the things thing is not all is not of our world it must be from another dimension entirely you feel overcome with dread and a sickening revulsion so we have to fight the horror it's five so it's not too bad maybe um let's see oh they're amazing so queen king defeats the queen we get nine points we're like not afraid at all of this thing we're actually very brave so let's uh open things up we got extra points uh to our mental ability which goes up to 21 is amazing I, I don't think i've ever done so well in this game so far so we can attack him and target is five it's gonna be very easy we can use sorcery against him um Attacking is slightly easier because we have uh, five cards we can draw there instead of four. And plus we can use our combat modifiers. And maybe I can, I'll can be able to show you that. Or we can flee, but again, this is very easy but pointless because it, it is more or less possible to defeat this guy. So let's go and fight him. Uh, we got a lot of swords. Uh, and what these things allow us actually is, we can do it now because we need to flip these cards first, is we can decrease their value by spending ammunition. As crazy as that sounds, that's how it works. And this one is gonna allow us roll one bone and bump one card values down, etc. Blah, 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 blah. And result cards that are uh, wounds are double. Okay, and this is also the same thing. You can use this to bump it down. And I think we all, something else we haven't done, but I'll, I, I hope I don't forget this when this battle is over. Okay, let's flip some stuff. Um, immediately, this is a point uh, that is not good to us. And that is terrible to us. Swords, come on, man. Swords! Oh, fuck. Okay. So, there's no point bumping anything down here because we don't... We cannot read them and we don't have the suit, the correct suit. So we fail, uh, but we're going to fight him again. And there's two bad cards we need to draw now. Talisman that we had before. So, during combat, it's a combat talisman. Appears, and if we open this one, even if it's something bad underneath, it's not going to hurt us because the talisman will be protecting us. As a 60% chance this talisman appear every time we lose the combat, and a 6% chance that if we do open this card, talisman will disappear permanently from our inventory. But I'm gonna use it anyway. So we save here, and we need to open one more. Let's open this one. Nothing bad happened. Let's fight this guy again. Now we're gonna have five tricks and five draw, and it's gonna be easier to fight him, except that our cards are really, really crap. Um, yes, there's no point here. Uh, well, actually, we won this one. Um, no. We need a pentacle. Queen against a page is very nice. We won immediately, and then we scored more points even here. I think there's there's no point now decreasing the value of the card because we are winning, so it's all good. We won actually very uh, in a very good victory. Um, the creature is mortally wounded and uh, crumples down into a uh, gelatinous heap. And we can draw four cards, so let's do one, two, three... Ooh, what is this? Machete. Machete. Use perchance of the requires a passage to tell us a partner already. Okay, I have no idea what it is. A weapon! We got a melee weapon, I guess. And nothing of interest. That was too bad. Um, we get some HP as well. Now, what we see uh, beyond him, well, so now that we have defeated the guy, is uh, a dissection table. So, you can now get a view of what uh, a Tessellari was working on, and it's truly horrifying. A human victim lies trapped to the table, the top of his skull removed. The brain has been transported to a holding dish and was in the final stages of being placed into a brain bot. So those guys create brain bots, you can meet them in the game as well. You note that the body has been taken off uh, of its life support and appears to be dead. There will be no going back even if you had the surgical skill to reverse this. So he cannot save the guy, but apparently the brain are probably still alive. So what you can do is your mercy kill, is you know what you would want done for you. It's hard choice, but you think it's the right choice. So you need to, I guess, attack the brain and kill it. Or you can communicate with the brain. I think this is much more interesting. Hard though, because um, we only can draw three cards, but the target is just four. Mm, you notice that a testari was in the process of hooking up a simple voice module to the brain pen holder. Let's try and this, is, this sounds too enticing to pass up. Oh, we have amazing cards. Jesus, yes, please. Communication, oh yeah. We already won. Let's see if we can get some more stuff here. Oh yes. I think we're gonna get a lot of information from this brain. Because now I have nine points, which is five above the target. You seem to have an aptitude for understanding trans-dimensional alien technology. I, I knew it, I knew it. I knew I had a purpose in my life. 
we have the circuit working in no time. Right, so we got a quest actually. So we need to find a Tesselari scientist named Zur and kill him. We turn to Professor Mekin and tell him that he's, the deed is accomplished and his revenge is complete. So that's our task quest that we receive from this uh, from the brain. Uh, but plus we can draw three more cards um, for our joy and pleasure. Let's do it like that and like that and we got nothing interesting. Okay. But well, we got a quest out of it. Um, okay, so the name is Professor Mekin and he was uh, developing a rocket fuel for the Cranker Corp core and the team was ambushed. Uh, Professor Mackin wants you to finally kill the Tesla leader who is somewhere in the house. His name is Zur. Kill him and then return with the news and we'll get, um, I guess, some sort of reward from that. Um, you see that this also is going to remain as an exclamation mark because it's in some sort of unfinished uh, thing like with the fire. But this is a glitch. This is because we didn't have enough perception, I think, to f uh, find something interesting about those papers. Uh, but if we go on the quest and we find this guy and, and, and kill him and we get either good items or we get good stats, we're going to improve basically and be more ready to um, fight the evil that uh, li uh, lays downstairs in the basement of this mansion. Okay, so why don't we continue our journey down this corridor, open this door just in case. Um, the opening of the doors does not cost you anyone anything. So here, um, what is this? Some sort of bodies, okay, that looks menacing. What about this door? A bathroom. Is it a bathroom? Is it a storage room? Is it a bathroom storage room. Okay, they all look um, pretty bad. So let's go to a small room here. Okay, seems there's nothing of interest here. There's some rooms there's nothing of interest. That, that's okay. Um, well, this room seems like some weird items have been thrown around. And I feel that something terrible is going to happen to us. Well, maybe not. Oh, There's a lot of empty rooms. Okay, what's in here? This is way up. I've never been upstairs. This could be a good chance to do it. Okay, so this is the floor above. So the map should indicate this. This is the second floor. Oh, there we are. Um, fine. Okay, let's explore this room here. Oh, random encounter. So this is the shadow guy again. So we need to be not afraid of them. Oh, this is pretty crap. Difficulty seems to go have gone up. Oh, wow, okay. Uh, this is scary. Some scary stuff here. Okay, we gotta abandon this. Um, so not too bad, but kind of bad. But we, yeah, we escaped more or less in, in, in one piece. So, okay, so tricks and draw go down oh, as soon as you're on a different floor whether or not is it a floor above or floor below. I, I'm guessing because I haven't really played that much. So fleeing is again more difficult than um, and dispelling the shadows. Let's try and dispel them. Uh, maybe we can, oh God, this is terrible. Um, yeah, there's nothing I can do here. Look at that. So that was a defeat. But we, um, curiously enough, we still managed to get away. Um, now it's going to be a bit easier because our determination helps us to... Um, f oh, shit, seriously, look at this! How am I supposed to succeed in that? God, this is horrible. Right, this is a terrible fail. We have to draw a lot of cards. See, this is the damage to your mental uh, ab ability. It brings you closer to insanity. It wasn't too bad after all. Now it's going to be even easier. We, at least we have some um, normal high-ranking cards. If we get a pentacle, we win automatically, more or less. Um, oh yeah, we have to abandon this, or surrender that one, actually. Uh, pentacle, man, seriously. Oh, this we're just, we're just stuck here. I think we need to go down back to the ground level. This is not gonna end up well. We're just losing sanity here continuously. Uh, we have to get rid of these guys. Oh God, it's the same deck. Okay, at least we uh, we beat we beat this one, so that's not too bad. Have to abandon that, and no pentacle, so we have to. Ah, oh, this is we're trapped. Okay, so that was not too bad. Let's try this one more time. This is not gonna go well. We have to abandon it. Uh, I have to abandon it. Ah, oh, what is it? I feel that we're gonna die soon. So you can get stuck like this in a game, and it, that's. Part of the reason why it's so challenging. 
but uh, this could could work maybe now you give me pentacles okay 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 we got away all right cool great we, didn't, we are not gonna gain much from this oh we, we gained back one in one sanity that's good um what's in here or even higher into the attic you know what forget it I'm gonna exp uh, I don't know I'm gonna explore one more room oh shit Ah, oh, crossbow is fired at us. Okay, this is easier-ish. Could could do it. It's possible. Yes. Almost there. Very nice. Okay, we got away. And we got away well. Right. That was that was, uh, that was lucky. Uh, let's see if we get anything for luck. We got uh, HP. Very nice. Let's see what's in this. Oh, it's just a giant corridor. You know, I'm just gonna go downstairs. I, I'm not. I'm. I don't feel I'm well equipped. Oh, zombies! <laughs> of course, of course, there's zombies. Um, despite having dispatched quite a few of these undead automatons, you still, uh, you, they still creep you out. Okay, so this is, should be easy enough. Um, maybe not. No, it is gonna be easy enough. Uh, I'm gonna use probably night because that automatically gives me a win, and then we're gonna win a bit more. Um, yeah, that's fine. That's a good win, I think. Okay, and so uh, capacity, ability, sanity is gained. Now we need to fight them because we're not afraid of them anymore. So we can flee. Because actually fleeing is easier. But, I mean, we're not that kind of guys, right? We don't we don't just flee shit. Okay, so this is not good. This is better. Um, so we need a wand. And we got a wand. So we're going to use a knight of wands against the six of wands. And we're going to win this. Uh, cool. Cool, so that's a victory. Very nice. Let's see what we gain from it. Nothing. Right, let's go down this corridor, uh, and I'm gonna round up the video uh, in the next, like, five to ten minutes. Let's explore the two rooms here, and then we're gonna call it quits, probably, because I don't want this to be uh, too long. Okay, so we are encountering more zombies here. You saw them lying on the floor, but you obviously didn't connect the dots. You started all you, you started off do down the hall, giving the develop sex a wide berth. Berth? What's berth? You slipped past one large bag and then stopped in your tracks when you heard the ripping sound of cloth being torn by some sharp instrument. You turned the face sound and uh, witnessed a decaying corpse rising up out of the remnants of the bag. The sharp instruments are razor-like claws. Okay, so we have zombies with claws. All right, so first things first, we should uh, try and withstand the horror. And I think we managed to do it. We did quite well. And we get nothing for it. And now we need to either flee, or they will probably chase us, or fight them, which is slightly more difficult than before, but I'm gonna fight them anyway. Because we can also use our cards in combat to maybe help us out, but I think this is gonna go well. So we're gonna use the king here. In case I don't get a chance to use them anymore, I'm gonna use the knight here. I think we just destroyed those zombies. Um, we 12 points against six. So it's very good. You won the battle. The zombies lie scattered on the floor in several pieces. You decide to not put them back in the bag. <laughs> cool. Let's open the deck up here. Okay. At least we got some HP. I thought it was going badly. All right. So I think. Oh. This looks uh, not so very good. Let's open it. You can go in here, see what's up. There's something here. The Ghost Bride, of course. It's my favorite. You hear the soft beat of a human heart. It seems to slowly grow louder. The air around you becomes cold and you start to see your own breath. Suddenly, a ghost materializes directly in front of you. It's the ghost of a woman dressed in an elaborate bridal dress. The sight of her is quite a shock. So... She's not that scary. Come on. We can beat this. Oh, crap. Okay, let's do that. Okay. Come on. Oh, fuck. Okay, I guess she is scary. Ah, oh, my mind is weak. But we got away. Now, what we could do with her? We could dismiss the ghostly bride using our psychic powers. It's very hard. Communicate with the ghost. That's what we need to do. It's a good idea. I'm going to communicate with the ghost. I always want to do that. So it's fairly easy. Oh, kind of easy. We only have uh, three tricks and three draw. 
Let's try it. Oh god. It's not gonna work, is it? Uh uh, uh. fail. Okay. Go insane in the membrane. Let's try and communicate with her again. Because this is gonna give us a quest. Oh god, come on. Okay. There we go. Finally. Right, so we communicate with her. So we enter a trance and soon are talking with the ghastly bride. Ghastly bride? Yeah. She explains that she is waiting here for a betrothed who is late for the wedding. She wants you to help. So we get a quest. So find the fiancé of the Constance, uh, the ghastly bride, or the ghostly bride. I think it's ghostly bride. Uh, somewhere in the mansion. Return to the ghostly bride and tell her what you have found out. And we open one more card, and nothing happens. Great. So we're going to leave her alone for a bit. See if there's anything else of interest is... Oh, there's something else here. Let's see... Okay, let's see what this is. Ooh, that looks good. The ghost students. <laughs> uh, the ghost students. At first, they look like small reflections of light playing off the floor from the moon. They appear to dance in a circle around the room, which upon further consideration seems very odd. Suddenly you realize that you are observing the ghosts of four children playing merrily by themselves. The quiet serenity of the deathly scene is shocking. These children don't seem to realize that they are dead. Okay, so uh, four target the children are not very scary. Um, which is different from what usually the Hollywood films tell you because they think the ghostly children are very scary. It's not true. They're not scary at all. Right, so we we are we actually probably are more scary than children because we won this uh, with um, what you have kept your sanity sad as it is you have endured much worse hauntings than this. Cool. Um, so I think yeah, as I was saying, I think we were more scary than those kids. Got more sanity and nothing else. So can we communicate with them? Maybe flee them, dismiss the ghost children. Yeah, that's uh, it's getting pretty difficult. So I'm probably gonna flee this one. Uh, this one. Oh, okay, this is seems a bit easier than usual. Um, the, nope. Oh shit. Okay, there we are. Um, yeah. So win, and we uh, run away from them and got nothing. All right, let's leave them alone for a bit. Oh, a class one haunting. Suddenly you see the glim glow of a formless ghost just ahead of you. It seems to just hang in the air. So we're going to need to, again, um, endure the horror. Uh, I think we're not going to endure it very well. Uh, we failed terribly, actually. Um, oh, and we lost two sanity. Uh, all for nothing. All those sanities we gained. Uh, we can flee. It's, it's a bit harder. Oh, we can just uh, dispel this guy. So this is going to take that, and we're going to win immediately. Uh, this is a bit worse, and this is not going to help, So, but we won anyway. Let's see what we got. We got um, a uh, experience point, actually. We need to... That's what I wanted to do. Let me just go there until something happens again. We uh, There's a lot of ex increase... Uh, sorry, experience points or tokens I haven't used. You should actually use it in the beginning of the game. So what you do with this, you insert them in different abilities. So you can increase your ranged edge, or you can add a skill card if you put five of them here, or you can increase the swords, which is your, your dam the damage you do, um, which is going to help you fight things. Uh, increase the wands, which is uh, your mental ability. So let's say, for example, if we go one, two, three, four, we increased it. Um, and I think it went up here to three. We can then invest this, for example. I'm going to leave it as it is because there's no point putting them here. They don't add anything to you until you can actually use them. Um, we got Edge, so we got where Shootist and a Mental Fortress. I didn't even show you this stuff. So we got a Bone of Cups and Bone of Swords, which we need to roll sometimes in order to use special abilities. And then we have two quests going on, which we haven't managed to resolve just yet. So let's explore this room to the brim. Okay, so that's done. Uh, we're, um, I don't think I'm going to come back for that anytime soon. Uh, those kids are um, pretty scary to me and I cannot really dispel them. What's in here? Ooh, look at that. Nice plants. So let's explore this room and this is going to be the last room I explore uh, for this video. Uh, it's going surprisingly well. I probably should save it. Maybe I'll do like a part two and to see uh, to follow the crazy hair character um, and see if she actually succeeds in maybe at least in her quest, if not in the, the general quest of the game. 
So there's a thing there. Mm. Okay, so thing. Ooh, what's that? A row of talking busts. It's kind of like from Futurama. You notice a row of sculpted marble busts against the wall. You count four until you notice that one has fallen to the floor and subsequently cracked in half. A sudden chill comes over you as you watch in amazement as the faces of the busts begin to move. Lips pucker and cheeks flex as if they were warming up for something. And then they begin to sing. <laughs> okay, so they're not very scary. Should be easy enough for us to uh, let's use the knight here uh, to get rid of them. Yeah, that, that that's cool. Line is strong. Uh, two points, nothing interesting. So, oh, there's a lot of things we can do with them. So we can either interrupt the talking busts. Um, this is persuasion and lore, using of the persuasion of lore. We can attack the bust, which is hard, and I'm not going to do that. We can do sorcery against the bust, which is, again, I'm watching, that's something I'm going to do. We can engage in a psychic duel, which is, again, hard, and I'm not going to do. What is easy here is to, we could also leave them alone. But what if we interrupt them? So you decide to use exper expertise as a medium to attract the boss's attention and see if you can find out what their story is. They might have useful information since they seem to have been sitting here for quite some time. Let's do that. Should be, uh, I was gonna say easy enough. No, it is easy enough. So we won, uh, we have interrupted them and they have given us a quest. So we need to find the gargoyle statue destroyed and then retrieve the cursed coin inside it. Use the cursed coin to free the souls of the haunted busts. <laughs> oh, that's a nice quest. Okay, cool. So that's, that's our quest. Uh, we're going to leave them alone again. Until anything else, uh, we, we find what they're looking for. Cool. So I'm going to stop the video here. So this is the uh, Occult Chronicles, a game uh, in beta development. You can It can be yours for $15 or maybe slightly more because... Actually, the buying part of this game is uh, is quite weird because it goes through some weird, not necessarily weird in a bad way, but in a very, in a very old school website that needs like your address, even if you're doing a PayPal transaction, which is I think very counterproductive to actually selling something well, in, you know, uh, in our day and age. Um, sorry for using that cliche, but it's, it was quite a painful process to buy it, but. Once you do buy it, so again, like it's like fifteen to say it says fifteen dollars, but they charge you VAT for it. So I think, if I'm not mistaken, because I paid twelve pounds for it in then, which is a lot more than fifteen dollars. Um, but you can get it now. There should be a link in the description um, to re reiterate what this is. This is a sort of a, a turn-based roguelike uh, game about fighting ancient or not so ancient evil in a mansion. Um, so it's a lot of uh, there's a lot of exploration, uh, a lot of uh, flipping cards and finding things and getting attributes and using your attributes correctly and um, dying of being uh, very very afraid. I, it, though it didn't happen to me now, maybe because I was I don't know I was I played on this difficulty twice before and I, I died quite quickly very horribly. Maybe I was lucky. Maybe I just got slightly better at the game. We did didn't haven't really explored that much of the. Uh, of dimension, um, but uh, it, it gets a lot more difficult if you go up or down, it, it changes drastically, especially if you go down into the basement. Anyhow, I uh, hope this was interesting and fun to watch for you guys. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.